For the second set of notes on angle of elevation and depression, we'll be focusing on some application word problems. We'll do the first two examples together. You'll work on three and four on your own, and then we'll come back together to do example five. Let's first make sure that we have our calculators handy. And also, before we move forward, let's make sure that it's in the correct mode. So I'm going to come over here where the second button is and go to the right of that and click on the mode and make sure that our calculators are in degree mode. You want to make sure that that's highlighted. Keep in mind that if rating is, is highlighted, all of your answers are going to be incorrect. So if degree isn't highlighted at this point, please make sure that you highlight it. Once you're done double checking that, we could hit second mode to quit out of it. Let's take a look at the first example. Example set, Example 1 says, to calculate the height of a flagpole, you move 22 feet from the base and record the angle of elevation to the top to be 65 degrees, and we want to find the height of the flagpole. Let's go ahead and draw out a diagram so we can visualize this a little bit better. So here's our flagpole, and we moved 22 feet from the base. Well, this is the base of our flagpole. So let's go ahead and extend outward. We're moving 22 feet away from the base. So this right here is 22 feet. Keep in mind that the base of the flagpole and the ground form a right angle. Next, it says that we record the angle of elevation to the top of the flagpole to be 65 degrees. Keep in mind the angle of elevation is formed when you're looking up, and it's going to be the angle that's formed by the horizontal and your line of sight. Let's go to the top of the flagpole. So our angle of elevation, remember we can always put it right here, we know that that's 65 degrees. And in the end, we want to find the flagpole's height. So I'm going to put an X there since we don't know it. Similarly to the word problems that we did in the past, we have to determine if we're using sine, cosine, or tangent. Let's go ahead and start at our angle. So we're starting at our 65 degree angle. We want to find the side opposite the angle, and we're given information about the side adjacent to the angle. We don't have anything on our hypotenuse, so that means that we're going to be using tangent. We're not going to be using sine or cosine. Let's go ahead and set it up. We can say that the tangent of our 65 degree angle is equal to, and now let's go ahead and fill it in, tangent is TOA, so we're doing opposite over adjacent. So the side opposite our 65 degree angle is x, and the side adjacent to it is 22 feet. Let's go ahead and solve for x. I'm going to multiply both sides of our equation by 22. That'll reduce our denominator on the right-hand side of the equation. So in our calculators, just like we did before with the other word problems, we're going to type in 22 times the tangent of 65 degrees and we get approximately 47.18. So let's go ahead and list that out. 47.18. Now maybe we can round that to the nearest tenth. So that's going to be approximately 47.2 feet. So that's the height of our flagpole. In example two, we're standing on a plateau that's 800 feet tall and we see a hiker. The angle of depression from the line of sight to the hiker is 25 degrees. How far is the hiker from the base of the plateau? Let's go ahead and construct our plateau. So the plateau is going to be right here and it's going to form a 90 degree angle with the ground. We said that we're standing on a plateau that's 800 feet tall. So here's our 800 foot plateau. We're standing up here, and we spot the hiker down here. It says that the angle of depression from your line of sight to the hiker is 25 degrees. While the angle of depression, we're looking down at the object, in this case here the hiker, and it's going to be the angle that is formed with your line of sight and the horizontal. Now keep in mind, the angle of depression is not an angle in the triangle, it's outside of it. So using alternate interior angles, we could put our angle of depression right here. Instead of drawing that diagram out, remember what I told you in the first video. 
Even though it's an angle of depression problem, we can still put the angle of depression in the exact same spot as the angle of elevation. So I'm going to put the angle of depression here, which is 25 degrees, and we know that this is 800 feet here, that's the height of the plateau, and we want to figure out how far the hiker is from the base of the plateau. Well, the base of the plateau is here, and the hiker is over here at ground level, so we want to find that distance. Let's go ahead and focus on which trig function we're going to use, either sine, cosine, or tangent. Let's go ahead and start at our angle of depression, which is 25 degrees. We're given the side opposite our angle, which is 800, and we want to find the side that's adjacent to it. So that's O and A, that's TOA. So once again, we're using tangent. Let's go ahead and set it up. So we're going to say that the tangent of our 25 degree angle is equal to, tangent is TOA, so we're doing opposite, which is 800, over the adjacent side, which we don't know, so that's x. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by x, which is the denominator of our fraction. We're left with x times the tangent of 25 is equal to 800, but we want to solve for x. So let's go ahead and divide both sides of our equation by the tangent of 25. That reduces there. We're going to our calculators and we're typing this time 800 divided by the tangent of 25. And we get approximately 1,000. 715.61, but I'll just round that to 0 0.6, so let's round to the nearest tenth. So we have approximately 1,715.6. So approximately 1,715.6 feet, which means that our hiker is just over 1,000 feet, well, actually close to 2,000 feet, from the base of the plateau. Why don't you try examples three and four on your own, and once you're done, you're going to press play again. So let's pause the video for now. You're trying examples three and four on your own, and then we'll press play to double check our answers. For example three, it says we have a dog that's looking at a squirrel at the top of a 49-foot tree. The angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 64 degrees. How far is the dog from the base of the tree? So here's our dog. And we know that the tree would be right here. We know that the tree is 49 feet, so we put that there. And we want to figure out how far the dog is from the base of the tree. So that's that distance here that we labeled x. We had to use tangent once again. So I set it up this way. The tangent of 64 is equal to 49 divided by x, since we're doing opposite over adjacent. And then we have to multiply both sides of the equation by x and eventually divide by the tangent of 64 we should get approximately 23.9 feet. For example four, we're focusing on the angle of depression this time. It says that we're at the top of a lighthouse and we see a whale in the water. So here's the whale down here at the water. You're at the top of the lighthouse, which is right here, that I highlighted in yellow, that's our lighthouse. And it says that the angle of depression from your line of sight to the whale is 55 degrees. Keep in mind, we could put the angle of depression in the same spot here that we put the angle of elevation because those alternate interior angles are congruent. And it says that the whale is 650 meters from the base of the lighthouse. Well, the lighthouse is right here, the whale is right there, and it's 60, 650 excuse me, meters from the base of the lighthouse. That's why I labeled this 650. And we want to find how high the lighthouse is, so I labeled that X. Once again, we're using tangent, so we did the tangent of our 55 degree angle is equal to the opposite, which is x, over the adjacent, which is 650, and there we just had to multiply both sides of the equation by 650, which leaves us with approximately 928.3 meters. Last but not least, let's take a look at example 5. It's a little different, so that's why I want us to do it together. So it says that we're flying a kite with, a 20, with 20 feet of string extended. The angle of elevation from the spool of the string to the kite is 41 degrees. How far off the ground is the kite if you hold the spool 5 feet off the ground? Alright, 
So let's first start by drawing our ground. And we're standing on the ground. We're holding the spool. And it says that the kite has 20 feet of string extended. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and construct that. This is our kite. We know that we have 20 feet of string extended, so it looks like that. Now it says the angle of elevation from the spool of the string to the kite is 41 degrees. But we know that we're holding the spool five feet off the ground. And we want to find out how far off the ground the kite is. All right. So since we're talking about this extra distance here, we have this five feet here between the spool and the ground. Let's go ahead and construct our right triangle like this. And then let's worry about that additional five feet at the end. We do know that the angle of elevation from the spool to the kite is 41 degrees. So I'm going to put my angle of elevation there, just like we put all of our angles of elevation in depression. And we want to find how high the kite is off the ground. So we are looking for this. So let's go ahead and solve this triangle like we normally would. And then in the end, let's go ahead and consider this additional five feet and add it on. Okay, so let's go ahead and just solve this triangle at first. So we're looking at our 41 degree angle, which is our angle of elevation. We want to find the side opposite the angle, and we're given information about the hypotenuse. So let's think about which trig function we're using here. Remember, we have SOHCAHTOA to help us. So we want to find our opposite, and we're given our hypotenuse. So O and H means we're using SO. So let's go ahead and set it up. We're saying that the sine of our 41 degree angle is equal to, we're doing opposite over hypotenuse. So X over 20. Let's go ahead and solve for X. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by 20. So in our calculators, we're typing 20 times the sine of 41. And that leaves us with 13.1. We round to the nearest tenth. So x is approximately 13.1. So we know that this distance here, let me highlight it in yellow, from the kite to this point, that yellow, is approximately 13.1 feet. But we want to figure out how far the kite is from the ground. So since we were originally holding that spool five feet off the ground to begin with, let's go ahead and add the 13.1 to the 5 to figure out how far away the kite is from the ground. So we have to do 13.1 feet plus 5 feet to give us our final answer. So that'll give us approximately 18.1 feet. So we solved it the exact same way as we did the other problems, except since we were given this information at the end that said that the spool was five feet off the ground, what we just did is we just added five feet to this height here. 